the reverse, and our first hit is... <laughs> What's going on guys? Darkness of Blaze is finally here. I got myself a booster box, and we're gonna get cracking. Feels like it's been an eternity since we've seen the Americans open it. A couple weeks ago, I think it was, that they started, they got it early. The box actually looks pretty good, except for this yellow. This uh, I'm not feeling the yellow. The rest of the box, the bottom half especially, looks pretty cool. But let's not waste any time and get cracking. While I was waiting for it to release, I was watching a lot of these smaller YouTubers and it seems the whole new thing is talking about Pokemon investing. So I'm going to throw my two cents in it. Darkness of Blaze is not going to be a good set to invest in, but you should open packs without a doubt. I'm going to keep the curds unfortunately because they are pretty expensive and since there's, since there's a green, I'm just going to go through it like this. So I'm going to split as well, I'm going to do the bulk swing, so I'm going to open quite a few. So I'm going to leave it like this. See, yo. You know, there's already been so many people opening packs, so I'm just going to go give you a little... Give you three reasons why Darkness of Blades isn't going to be a good investment set, but why you want to open packs and the main reason is the VMAX Charizard is not a rare card. It's basically a full art rare. Oh, we got one there. Well, I'm just going to carry on like this though. Go to the comments. We've got the reverse. And our first hit is. <laughs> a colossal gold card. I was not expecting that. The first ever hit is a colossal gold card. That is awesome. <laughs> but yeah, as I was saying, the VMAX Charizard is basically a full art rarity. It's not even a rainbow rare. It's not. It's definitely not a gold secret rare. And you can, see, you can tell why it was it. Darium's last video, he opened three Charizard VMAXs in one case. Three Charizard VMAXs in just one booster case. And for any other Charizard chase, that's never been heard of. Unbroken Bonds and Burning Shadows, I believe. Gabe of Toughness is pretty good as well, by the way. It's just a playable card, it sells for a decent amount. But yeah, both Unbroken Bonds and uh, Burning Shadows. They were like one in a thousand packs to get the Rainbow Rare Charizard. Whereas this one. I'm seeing pictures online of people just getting so many of these and even multiple per cases like Darium's did quite a lot of people are getting two three is uncommon I'd say kind of rare Blazik and Hollow I didn't think it was going to be a hit so that Hollow actually looks pretty sweet Back to back. This one's definitely uh, gonna be something. Got Diglett Reverse and. Oh, Rick of OV. I'm liking the colors. It's a pretty beautiful looking card. Yeah, so the Charizard is going for around 130. Ooh, three in a row. It's going for around 130 in the UK at the moment. Hasn't really decreased. Ooh, one will be and Charizard V. We'll sort this out. Let's leave these over there. Hasn't really decreased much since the UK didn't really get any stock until today. And probably yesterday, I guess, was the main time. Yeah, my prediction is going to be that it's going to half within two weeks and it's going to stabilize around £50 within one month of Darkness of Blaze release. So one month from today, Charizard's going to drop to £50. So the reason why you want to crack packs open is literally just open it, sell it, done. Get £130 
for a Charizard VMAX. It's quite a few decent cards. Number two, the second reason being the other expensive cards are playable cards. So let's go like that. Swan our reverse and <laughs> what is this box? Pokemon Breeders Nurturing. So we've got a rainbow rare and a gold card. I'm loving this first booster box, man. The uh, reason number two. The other expensive cards are the playable cards, which is basically Crobat and Eternus. So... <clears throat> You know, once once the playability aspect's gone, there's going to be no collectability value for any of those cards. Well, Eternatus, Eternatus is pretty cool, but whose favorite Pokemon is Crobat? I mean, come on. Nobody cares about Crobat, do they? And since the chase isn't that hard, whoa, the code card's bent. Oh, well, there you go. There's one. It's going to mess up my account. I'm trying to sell him as 36. Oh, well. We'll go to the reverse and a melodic hollow. I'm gonna leave the hollow stack on top. Code cards bent again. That's why I like having the hit in the middle because it protects it from if like the back is worse. It's alright, but to used to trying to do the pack trick, but don't, I can't be asked. So we got a reverse Kafan and a Scizor V. One side of the pack, one side of the booster box, and this tree does pretty well. Oh. See how it goes. Ooh. Reverse shell. Mate. Is there another holo or a center scorch VMAX? Apparently this one's pretty good. Um I've already been following the price of that one. But yeah. Problem with playability cards are if Pokemon decides to release a product like the um League decks with a Pikachu and Zekrom. Oh. I kind of flopped that, but hey, Sizzle V, that's pretty dope. I flopped that one big time. But if they release a product like the Lee decks with the Reshazards and the Pika Roms. Also, what was the other one? The Dene got released that reduced this price. When you get a card like that, which is actually valuable in a set, and then they release it as a promo, the price of the, the expected value of a booster box drops so, so much. Similar with Zoroark in uh, Shining Legends. Zoroark, when it was first came out, it was going for like 35, 40 pounds. As soon as they released the Zoroark full art box, 10 pound, 15 pound, easy. The price just tanked. So that's the problem with, if you want to hold the Darkness of Blitz. If you want to open it, you literally just Buy a booster box, open it. You're more likely to make money right now than anything else. Because, I'll tell you in a second, there's definitely something there. Got a reverse Dale Catty. And, that flop has all MUV. Loving the MUV, it's a pretty nice, cute looking card. The other reason was, Prices are always high at the start of release day. Start of release of a set. It's just going to go down from there simply because supply. Got re reverse vanilla and Galissa Pod Hollow. As soon as people start opening packs and starting flipping them online, all the cards are going to drop. So the earlier you open them, the earlier you sell them, the more money you're likely to get. And the third reason, hang on, let me get the product. The 
third reason is this thing here. The twin pack blisters that they've come out with. I'll tell you why this is important later on. In another video when I'm actually going to open those. Because to me it seems like the supply of Dark Blister Blaze is so high at the moment. Pokemon are pushing this set quite a lot. And it seems like the amount of packs that you can get it's just uh the supply is just a lot man and the value of that twin pack blister is insane you basically get half price pokemon packs you can't argue with that someone who likes to open product oh i do like this lugia this regular rare lugia and damn it's getting reflected give me a sec pull down the blind a bit better. Let me Yeah, it's not reflecting as much, so that's <laughs> that looks quite a bit better. Got another white code, is it hollow? Oh, come on. I really need a better opening station. Reverse Heatran and... Koparaja Hollow. Reverse Persimian and a Dark Cry Hollow. The Dark Cry actually looks pretty dope as well. I've got some pretty decent hollows in this set. I normally don't really care about the hollows. But yeah, to summarize basically, why it's not a good investment, but why you should crack the packs open is there's a lot of hits that are worth a decent amount. And the price is only going to go down. The chase card that's actually selling for a hundred plus, not that hard to get. And the biggest reason why I would say open right now is the codes for this this set are pretty valuable as well. They're selling around fifty pence a piece. So if you don't play the online game. You can easily just knock off 15, 18 quid off a booster box. Spinner rack and Pinu. Pinurchin. The other thing is, there's eight. I've seen, I've watched quite a few videos and it seems the the average number of hits is eight. So how many have we got? Two, four, six, seven, eight. We already got the expected number of hits, but we do have two unusual ones. So hopefully we get at least one more V or V max. Is it in this pack? Grimwood trying, Grimwood tangle, and a Suicune hollow. Pretty dope hollow as well, actually. Down to our last three packs. Let's see if we can get anything else, but honestly, this booster box is pretty sick. something there. Ooh, reverse Tyranitar as well. Goddamn card me. And Salamon's V. We're our final pack of the day. It's a green code of course. Pretty happy with the nine hits. Oh, what am I doing that? It's just got this reverse Yellhorn. 
decent amount of trainers that are pretty good in this set as well. And there we are. I'll put a turtle down at the bottom. Thank you guys for watching. Like, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next video.